Hare Krishna, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Make Japa Great Again. And just this morning, I was doing a little writing, and previously I had been talking about attitude and how important it is. But it quite like the word as much, especially because somehow or other I borrowed somebody else's what has become sort of a cliche and it was annoying me, which is your attitude determines your altitude. It's a little too sing-songy and uh, overused. So I started thinking more about frame of mind and I remember something I read in a book which you've probably heard me mention many times, called The Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki, one of the start, uh, per, people who helped start Apple. And he talked about, um, he said, frame or be framed. You have to decide what the purpose of your life is and uh, how you want it to go so you can frame it. And then I looked up the word frame. It comes from Middle English. And it has to do with preparing the timber for a house to frame it. It's still used in that way because you frame up a house before you build the rest of it. And so it's really important to develop our frame and to remember also that if we don't frame who we are and what's most important to us in life, and somebody else will frame it for us and say, no, no, you have to do this. It's like, why do I have to do that? Because I said so. <laughs> well, you get to say so as a human. So I'm writing this little guide for people who are trying to get to 16 rounds and maintain them. And so I was considering some of the main framing points that have to be in place in order to maintain or get to and then maintain uh, chanting 16 rounds of japa. So here are the four main frames that I'm writing about. The first one is know what's in it for you because we naturally gravitate towards what's, what we perceive as being in our greatest interest. We may have different perspectives about what's good for us depending on what mode of nature we're in. <clears throat> but if we take advice from the Shastra about the ultimate benefit of chanting, for instance, in the sixth chapter, sixth canto of the Bhagavatam and the story of Ajamil, we can get, gain the perspective of the benefit of chanting Japa or even saying the Lord's name in the first place. That's a major category. Know what's in it for you. The next one is that make your pledge your wedge, that you have to make a, um, a commitment that you're gonna chant a certain amount every day. And last night I met a few young women from San Jose State that uh, Mukharvin is cultivating all these students and several of them showed up last night. They're very interested in being engaged in Krishna consciousness and they wanted to know if they could chant so I asked them about how, how much they were chanting now, and they said they do chant, but it's not consistent. So I was just telling them that if they made a commitment to chanting a certain amount every day, then they would make progress. So I made them commit to at least ch chanting two mantras a day. And don't go below that, because some days they were doing some, sometimes they weren't doing any. But we, when we make a pledge, that's a part of chanting japa and it's a vow and we're called devotees the word devotee literally means in latin somebody who keeps a vow the third is to make voluntary life improvements because unless we actively make improvements and voluntarily do it then our lives will go in directions that aren't as productive. And finally, the fourth frame is to keep the transcendental trail open, 
meaning that one of the ways to lose one's progress, you got? Thank you. Is just to take enough time off that the trail closes. For instance, in writing, if you're writing something and then you leave it for long enough, when you go back to it, it takes a much longer time to start again, even remember where it is in your hard drive. And it's a similar way with any practice that we have. Unless we give it attention, it becomes overgrown. The trail becomes overgrown. And as I like to say, at least physically, it's easier to stay in, sh it's easier to stay in shape than to get in shape. Because if you let yourself go, making a comeback can be really hard. In the meantime, you can develop all kinds of conditions that are almost impossible to overcome. So it's the same in Japa also, and keeping the trail open, giving as much as possible to the practice and not becoming estranged from it so that it becomes overgrown. So if, again, the four frames, know what's in it for you. There's a lot of cultivation from Shastra and I'm writing about those points. Make your pledge your wedge, which means be really dedicated to your vow of how much you chant every day. And the next is to voluntarily make improvements in your life. Think ahead. Be preemptive in doing it. That's what voluntary means. No, it doesn't, but it's related. And number four is keep the, tra the Transdale Trail open. What do you think? If I try hard enough, maybe I can... <laughs> Any uh, specific realization you want to share? In reflection, yes. Pardon me? What does the trail mean? Trail means that you're doing something over and over again. I was in Italy a few years ago and I made a, a little video because I saw these ants. They're so industrious. They make little highways through the brush. And I was watching them and I took a video of them and I saw how because they're going on the, the same route over and over again, now there's a trail. <laughs> there's underbrush, but they just cut right through it. So the trail is what we decide we're going to do every day, like our practice of sadhana. And when we do it over and over again, then it opens a space for us. And people around us, for instance, get used to the fact that we're doing it. Like sometimes family members, when we first start some practice, they go, oh, come on, you're not going to, you're not going to keep that. But the more you do it, the more it keeps the trail open and everyone gets used to the fact that that's, that's what he does. And if you then deviate from that and it gets overgrown again, then it's much harder to open it up. That's what it means, keep the trail open. Yes, I'd like to welcome Dr. Brent. He drove all the way out here from Utah. He's Cheru Prabhu's uh, right-hand man at the, in the Utah project. And he's been watching ISV for some time now just decided to drive out here for Radashtami with his wife. Welcome, Dr. Ben. Hi. Is this on? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just thinking of what you were talking about, the frame. I was thinking a frame needs to be on a foundation. And I was just wondering, is, would the foundation be the paraparam, or what, what would be the foundation of that? Well, the way I'm putting it now, I'm putting these four as a frame or the frame of the foundation. That being cultivating knowledge of why you're doing it and what's, what's the benefit for you, and then making the vow, the ones that I mentioned. So sort of frame and foundation I'm using synonymously. Unumas. The first uh, first frame really, um, I have seen that what it is for me, if we are more cons conscious about that fact, it really helps us to chant better rounds and, and improve our rounds and also be, and do 16 rounds also. So that's very first frame you have very yeah. aptly put. Generally people fade, fade away from the job of practice because of thinking something else is more beneficial to them. Whereas if we understand 
<clears throat> that our fortune comes from being in contact with Krishna, and that is accomplished by chanting japa, then we may the mind may be convinced to be steady in chanting. One from this side? Yes, one more from here. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I remember one point that you mentioned yesterday morning in we read a purport two two thirty five, I think, and Prabhupada mentions there that how do we understand the presence of super soul? So he there's one sentence which says one should be, begin with the intelligence, and then one should try to understand the Vedic scriptures, and then principally by the grace of the Lord one can realize this. So yeah. I I really like that we although we have all these frames, you, you know, so they this is our sincerity, and then ultimately we have to depend on the blessings of Krishna and the devotees. Yes, so that is a very nice, Guru Maharaj. And in that regard, Louis Pasteur once said, "The great discoveries come only under the prepared mind." And to, to discover Krishna's mercy, we also have to prepare. Make sure you're there. Show up for it. <laughs> Anything from this side? Yes, Avantika. Hi, Krishna. I like the point that you made about how, according to the different modes of nature we are currently in, we find different things that are most beneficial for us. And I thought that related to throughout different times of the day, according to what mode of nature is prevailing, you find different things beneficial, but you should always remember to keep the Maha Mantra in the center. It's a good point. It's true on a macro and a micro level. Macro level, the way we're seeing the world based on the modalities we're exposed to at the time, and also during the day, it seems a lot easier to chant in the morning than it does after you come home from school or work, right? And the mind is more or less scrambled. <laughs>